it's done a lot for my life. It took someone who came out of school with really no idea what I wanted to do and led me to the place where I could be the president uh, of a, a major tooling manufacturer here in the United States. It goes all the way back to my college roots. So uh, formerly in college, my four-year plan was to become a biology major. And I happened to be in a fraternity where he said, have you seen aerospace? Do you know what they're doing? Do you like to work with your hands? And, you know, I said, no, no, yes. And he said, you need to look at, uh, you know, look at this manufacturing avenue. This is really amazing stuff. And I think you'd be really good at it. So this was my fraternity advisor asking me to take a look at NC uh, programming as a background, which was mechanical uh, engineering background. And uh, after looking at it, I said, yeah, that, that actually sounds pretty interesting. And then, you know, went to a five-year degree for that and came out and uh, went right into the aerospace hopper after that. Jobs aplenty back in the 90s, if I could date myself a little bit. One of my best friends, his father owned a small machine shop, about a 15 to 20 man shop in the suburbs of Chicago. And he said, hey, and my dad uh, was thinking about retiring. Do you want to work here? And I said, sure. I, of course, I had no idea what I was going to be doing. Um, and he took me in. He was a, a journeyman, German gentleman who had come over here in 1977 and started the German operation of what was his company at the time. And, and I remember the first day I showed up in a suit and tie again, had no idea what to expect. And he said, what are you doing wearing a suit, suit and tie? You know, put on some jeans and t-shirts. And, and he started me from the ground up cleaning machines and then working from there, but it was great experience. So what I did is um, kind of in, in lieu of trying to go to college, um, I went to a technical school, North County Technical School down in St. Louis for my last two years of high school. So, and that was focused on, on machining. I think the really cool thing about a manufacturing environment is you're inventing things that you can actually hold in your hands. It, it gives you a view into the kind of how the world actually works, right? How things work. But for people who like to make tangible things uh, and have the challenge, it, it's, it's like 3D art. It's the challenge of how do I fabricate this from a block of material or whatever your raw shape is. It's kind of amazing to see most people walk around the world and look at things, look at cars, look at planes, look at, you know, posters and have no idea how they're made. When I first got into it as a machinist was to, to show up at work and really feel like I accomplished something in the course of the day. I, I, I started with a piece of steel or aluminum or whatever we were machining that day. And at the end of the day or at the end of the shift, whatever, there was a finished part or something that was moving along in production. And that was really exciting to me. Another attribute I think that this keys off of is people who believe in excelling. They want stuff to be better today and tomorrow than it was yesterday. There's always better ways to do things. There's more exciting ways to do things. And NC manufacturing and manufacturing in general makes that whole challenge just really, really interesting. I'm in year like 41 of manufacturing. And the last three or four years, I've seen change at a pace like nothing we've ever seen in the previous 40 years. So there's a lot of automation coming and automation is not a bad thing for the industry. You know, at first when automation, robots, et cetera, came around, people were very nervous. Oh, it's the death of manufacturing or it's never going to be the same, but it couldn't be further from the truth. I'm kind of sad to see that, you know, there's been so much emphasis, you know, college is great and all that, but I think for, there was a period of time there where you know, you got to go out and get a college education. And, um, and and I think that's starting to change. People have started to realize that trades are a great, a great career path. We need people who know how to operate and set up these robotic systems, these automated, automated systems, and, and we need a lot of them. So, uh, and I think the neat thing is it's, it's a simple transition. If you ask me, and I'm not a video game person, so I don't really know, but I would imagine that these people who are passionate about being on the computer all day long or being uh, involved with uh, video games or, or things like that, they, I think they, they need to expand their thought process and think about the automation and robotics section of our industry, because that is where the future is going and that's where we need help. A future job might be 
robot tender where someone manages a fleet of eight or ten robots and they're responsible for keeping all these little droids going during the day. So, I mean, that's just one example. The careers in manufacturing are going to be much more diverse. It's no longer just machinists and, you know, and, and manufacturing engineers, you know, it's data engineers, data scientists, it's technology. You could be working on the next EV capability. You might be working on sending someone or something to space. Uh, most of what you'd be working on if you get into aerospace and defense, you won't be allowed to talk about. That, that's pretty exciting all in itself. But you know, being part of fabricating things that didn't used to be here yesterday, I think is a very exciting environment to, to be in. And, and if you enjoy challenges, this is definitely the field for you.